Hey guys, Romy here. So please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, this is the Have and Have Nots Season 5, Episode 5, Brilliant uh, Lawyers Lurking. Now, uh, what I will say is, Veronica still gets on my nerves, but this episode, I was cackling. I wasn't laughing, I was cackling. So, I have to give it up to her. The episode starts off with Justin looking at Quincy's body. Well, he's in a body bag, but Quincy's body has been exposed, it's been discovered, and he's going to go and contact Jeffrey, but Jeffrey is waiting with Candace at the hotel. It's probably the Sarandon Hotel. Um, and, so, you know, Candace is looking, wondering, so when is your mother going to show up? When is she going to show up? Because we can't do this. I'm not going to sit here and wait for a woman who doesn't like me, who barely tolerates the fact that I'm alive, just, you know, so that she can go and jerk me around. I have to go and talk to my brother. I have to go and make good with him. It's like, what's going on there? Look, I just need to go. I just need to go. It's like, we need to stay here because if we go, my mom is not going to help us. Do you not understand that? Do you not understand that we are screwed? And it's like, oh, all right, let me sit back down. And mind you, this poor little uh, waitress just trying to go and get the orders to check in and make sure everything's good. It's like, do you guys want anything? Drinks? Candace was like, no. And they, no, no, we don't. No, we're good. Jeffrey? Oh, no, we're good. Comes back. Oh, yeah, actually, can you just bring me back something? You know, surprise us. Oh, okay. Um, can you show? I'm sure you don't want to go and check the drink menu? Does this face look like I want to uh, check a drink menu? No, I want the drink. Can you get that for me? Thank you. Oh, like, See, Candace, that's why you're not going to go too far in life. I was just ready to go in on Candace. But then guess who walks in? Veronica. Veronica walks in. Because, mind you, Jeffrey and Candace are squabbling back and forth around with the reason why Veronica wants to help them, even though she's probably the one calling the cops to them right now to go and uh, get them put in jail. I'm thinking Veronica has a bigger plan than that. Veronica has these flowers. Huh? wondering why she have the flower she goes to the front desk talks to the uh front desk person and lets it be known i was in this cab and this uh this guy wanted to go and deliver these flowers to a woman named erica she's supposed to be staying at this hotel um and of course he even like gave me some money and everything to make sure that i delivered the message and that it was from david that uh, the flowers were from David. Yeah, and so I just wanted to know, do you, does and Erica uh, stay at this hotel? Of course the attendants look at her like, um, of course, a bunch of Erica stay at this hotel. Oh, but could you possibly, you know, go and check? Oh, I understand confidentiality. I, I completely understand. She's like, yeah, of course, we can't give that information now. Yeah, but she, he just seems so concerned, wanted to make sure this uh, delivery got sent to the right person. Can you just go and check in your system and possibly see? Pretty please, pretty please. You know, it would help me out big time, please. And it's like, I understand privacy. I'm not trying to go and um, meet the woman. I don't need to know the woman's name. I just want to make sure it gets to her. And it was like, oh, okay. I, um, you know what? All right. Can you do it right now? It's like, well, you're right here. It's like, no, please. I just want to make sure that it's done so I can go and confirm to this guy. I mean, he was really um, doing me a solid. So I just want to, you know, pay it forward. Well, okay. I'm thinking, Lord Jesus, you fail. You fail. You fail. You fail. You lost your job. If that was a secret shopper, you lost your job. Anyway, she goes and she calls up Erica. So it's like, oh, yes, yeah, this is Erica so so. She gives the full name, like, oh, Lord Jesus. Yes, hey, Erica. Uh, mind you, in hearing distance for Veronica, yeah, we have some flowers. Oh, for me? Yeah, from a David Harrington. Oh, okay, yes, 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 exactly. Uh, would you like for me to bring them up? Oh, oh, yes, oh, please. <sighs> So then Veronica was like, oh, was it the right person? Yeah, it was the right person. Okay, and so she's going to be coming down? Oh, no, no, no. She's really happy about the flowers, but that's it. It'll be sent up to her. Oh, oh, really? No, no, no. She actually will be coming down. Oh, okay, great. Okay, thank you. So Veronica's just like, okay, that's my cue. All right, let me go and see if I can go and squabble with these people and wait to see the uh, person I'm actually really here for. So she goes over to Jeffrey and Candace, and Candace is sitting right across from Jeffrey. Veronica said, excuse me, that's my chair. Get up. Candace said, excuse me, what? No, she said, look. 
here's how this goes. The fact that you're in my presence is a blessing to you. So, gives a scoochie scoochie. Scoochie scoochie. So she gets up. She looks at Kansas shoes and says, Oh, darling, I'm sorry. Jesus, these these rags. Lord, oh, my designer clothes, you know, you make my designer clothes sneeze. Mm. I mean, the fact that the fabric, not even the fabric, just the lining on the linens that I wear are just on a whole other level compared to the rags that you... <laughs> anyway, Jeffrey, how are you? Oh, hi, Mom. Oh, Mom, it's Mom now, is it? You know, it's just so refreshing. All right, so what am I actually here for? Well, we need your help. Yeah, so what did you do to Quincy? What do you mean, what did we do to Quincy? Yeah, what did you do to Quincy? Tell me everything. We're not telling you anything. Why did you think we killed him? Jeffrey, we killed him. <sighs> okay, that's not a big deal. How many times? How many times did you stab him? Uh, around 50, I, th I mean, I'm not sure. Was it more than 25, more than 50, more than 100? I know it was more than 50. Oh, Lord. So, that was like aggravated assault in the crime of passion. Essentially, that's what the charge is. And, oh, that's going to be hard. Yeah, that's what Candace actually said. Oh, really? Yeah, she, oh, you're a lawyer. Hmm. So even if we were a serial killer, we couldn't justify that. Mm, but you're a lawyer? Oh, yeah. Honey, how could you call yourself a lawyer when all you did was go down on people in order to get those grades up? You know, you went down to get up with the maze? I said, oh, Veronica, I'm done with you. And Candace is like, no, I actually read those law books. How did you read them when you were using them as knee pads? <laughs> oh, did she make the slurp sound? I said, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Take it. Take it. I can't. I can't do it. It's too much. It's too much. <laughs> I was like, that's my alma mother. That's my alma mother. So you can't tell me anything different. I'm thinking, Veronica, are we really going to forget when you were going down on Catherine's old, aging, dying father? And you were slurping everything up? You were going down on his member to slurp everything up for that tuition. See, that's the thing. Candace and yourself are so similar. I said this last time. You're essentially the older version of Candace. Candace is the younger version of you. That's why you two can't see the eye to eye. That's the truth of the matter, and the fact that neither of you can really see it is crazy. So, let's continue. Did you stab him in the chest, or did you stab him in the back? I stabbed him in the back. Oh, Lord Jesus. Um, you know, I stabbed him more. Why? Because he was coming after me. What? Because he got uh, beat me up before. I'm thinking, we know this, because it was your mother that sicked him on you. So, we know that that's a fact. And... Uh, mind you, now they're trying to come up, because the whole time, Veronica's trying to come up with this alibi so that she can actually go and possibly help them. That's the reason why she keeps asking all these probing questions. So, now it's, okay, so how'd you get the house? Because in court, they're going to want to know all of this. How'd you get the house? And then Candace goes and makes this, she does, well, I sold those law books. <laughs> I said I'm done with you. I I write sales, don't you? I'm dead. I, I I am officially dead. I'm officially dead. I can't handle it anymore. I can't And then of course Candace didn't want to go and give up any more information. It's like why would you go uh, uh here we go with Jeffrey going and saying everything and Candace is trying to let me know you are her son. You are her son. Why would I tell you all everything that you possibly want to know? So about the house, how did you get the house? I bought it with cash. Stupid girl. Stupid girl. Why would you buy the house in cash when you didn't have an income to supplement it? They're going to want to and, um, go and figure out where did you get the cash? I'm thinking, duh, that seemed obvious. So where did you get the cash to buy this house to eventually kill your ex in? Really? 
So what did you do for it? What did you really do? Well, uh, Mr. Cryer, um, I worked with him and so... Oh, no, 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 You can't fool me. You went and you decided to go and blackmail Jim. Don't worry, I understand it. I went up that alley as well. But trust me, I don't have anything good enough to blackmail him to give me a house. So what did you do? She's like, trust. I worked this black uh, woman magic, this black girl magic. Said... So, Candace, that was weak. Veronica is killing it right now, and you came back with such weeks. <sighs> now, while this is happening, Erica comes walking down in her little uh, workout gear, and of course, Veronica sees, like, ooh, attractive black female. <laughs> so while Candace and Jeffrey are trying to talk to um, Veronica, Veronica is glued in. Like, who is this chick? Oh, Lord. So she's sees that it's from David, and she sees that it's flowers. So now she knows. Candace caught it. Candace caught it. So I'm hoping that she tells her girl, ooh, you better watch out. Because Veronica, mm, she, you need to watch out. You need to be careful. Where's, so where is he? Where's the body? Oh, it's buried in the backyard. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I had to laugh. Y'all so stupid. Y'all so stupid. Oh, I've worked with some stupid people. I really have. But you two have taken the cake. You have taken the cake. <laughs> you buried it in the backyard. Now remember, they buried it in the backyard because they had nowhere else to put the body. Because the house was being watched. They couldn't bring the body out. I mean, so we understand why she did it. Now, the whole thing was, give me your keys. <laughs> I've heard enough. You two are buffoons. Give me your keys. Oh, no. I, why do you want my keys? And she was like, give me a dollar. Because I'm your attorney. You need to officially pay me so that it can be all be on the books. So Jeffrey goes give her the money. Candace is over it. Like, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not giving you the keys to the house either. And then she said, you know what? It doesn't even matter because the locks have probably changed by now. What do you mean the locks have finally changed? Jeffrey's now like, dang, I don't have anything else to scratch you out on. What are you talking about, Candace? Well, um, so I took a mortgage on the house. Okay, that's dumb, but what was the purpose? Well, that doesn't matter. What matters is I took a mortgage on the house and I uh, forged the income verification form. The bank found out. And they told me I had a certain amount of time to pay them back. Couldn't do it. So they repossessed the house. She said, oh, you stupid little girl. Oh, Lord. I'm, I'm dealing with a basket of deplorables over here. You took a mortgage on the house that you paid in cash for. And then you forged the... Are you sure you're a lo... Are you sure? So, yeah, they... Anyway, so they took... Uh, the house is officially foreclosed on. They own it. And I'm thinking, wait a minute. When when did they do that? I, I thought the, as soon as she said it, I thought to myself, now, wait a minute now. This could actually work. Veronica said, you know what? I'm laughing, but that might have been the smartest thing you did. Now, follow me. Because she said you had some uh, law school. Follow me. When did that happen? Oh, well, it happened. Was it before or after your house got foreclosed on that they found the body. Oh, <gasps> yes. Oh, so see, you're not as dumb as I thought you were. All right, fill my dumb uh, child in. And it's like, all right, see, the thing is, I like you. You're stupid and you're annoying, but I like you. I, I do. I see something in you. I see a little bit of, I mean, I see something in you. So I'm going to help you out. I'm going to do you a solid. Don't worry about it. I got you covered. Thinking, Lord, you don't want that type of help. With her helping you with really no money, what does she want in return? Aside from, of course, she wants Jeffrey to go and marry uh, Melissa and uh, be a father to the baby. Like, Lord, I don't even believe this woman is still pregnant. But okay, if you say so. Uh, she finally goes and leaves. I'm thinking, Lord, the plotting, the plotting. Before she leaves, though, she, she touches Candace's back. You know, and it's just like, you know, I got your back, girl. I'm like, what is going on here? What is going on here? And she's like, oh, oh, gosh. Oh, my nails. <laughs> right. Go. Just go. Anyway, Candace said, 
you know what? Your mother is an evil genius. She is brilliant. Yeah, what are you talking? Look, the house got foreclosed on uh -oh, before they found the body, which means that I didn't own the house. I did not own the property when they found the body, which means even if they trace the body, well, obviously trace the body back to us, that whole thing can be thrown out in court. Your mother is an evil genius. I don't know how I didn't see it myself. I'm thinking because you were so distracted and all this other stuff going on. But that's Veronica. If she's nothing um, but conniving. Always has a plan. And we will move on. Because I, I went through that slowly because I wanted to make sure I covered every single part. So now we're going to speed it up. Catherine talks to... Talk... talk to Jim and Jim is trying to you know do the same thing question and probe her regarding uh oh what do you call it regarding the fact that oh so it's Veronica who did it. yes it's Veronica why'd she do it she did it because she did what okay where is she standing where are you standing I was sitting on the couch where are you sitting on the couch oh uh, was Veronica to the left or right of you was Jennifer to the right or left of you it's like uh, uh, she was to the uh, I'm not sure wrong wrong if you're going against Veronica on the stand, she's going to bury you. So let's try this again. Were you on, you're on the couch, right? What was she, let's just say, to your left? She was to your left. Okay, so then I was to the right. Oh, okay, good. Remember that. Wrong, wrong. Why? Because I just coasted an answer out of you. So why did Jennifer get shot with a, you know, point blank uh, stance? At a point blank stance. Oh, how'd you know? Wrong, wrong, I did it. You just told me. See, this is the thing. I know that you did it. I know that you did it. So why don't we try this one more time? Who killed Jennifer? I did. I killed her. I happily did it. Absolutely. She came in between my son. She came in between the only living child I had. And trust me, I would do it again. Not only would I do it again, I would include you. I mean, blink and watch. That gun that you just told me that, oh, it's in our safe. And how Veronica, apparently she has multiple guns. And I didn't know uh, that even though we've been friends for years. Um, and yet, this whole time, you want me to believe that I can go and kill you. I know that you did something with her. I can call it a crime of passion. And then you killed yourself because you just couldn't handle it. I mean, maybe I should go with that. So, so how about this, Jim? You go, you clean it up, you fix it. And then you get out of my house. Get out. Get out. And I'm telling you, you worrying about all these little harlots you have going on here. You know, the whore number nine. And, and Selena... What was it? Was this Selena? You know what I'm talking about. I'm thinking, wait a minute. We haven't heard that name in a long time. We haven't heard that name in a long time. Is she is she just gone from the show? Or are we just going to say her name when it's convenient every once in a while? Like, what happened to her? What happened to his other child? <sighs> anyway, Wyatt is, uh, he invited Pete, which as we know, Pete is his drug dealer friend that left him well, why doesn't remember this, but left him when he overdosed. So it's like, ooh, dang, I think he might be gone. Let's go clean up and get out of here. Yeah, I remember that, Pete. Well, even though Wyatt doesn't. And Wyatt was trying to score. It's like, do you have some blow? And Pete gained a conscience. He said, I can't give you any drugs. What's wrong with you? Why don't you, you overdosed. You overdosed. It was scary. We almost lost you. Why would you do it again? He said, I'm not selling you any drugs. Like, you know, how can you possibly have a conscience? I can just go and ask other people. There's other people who sell drugs in this town. Yeah, but you don't know them. You don't know them, so you won't be able to get anything in, in the state that you're in. Well, you know what? You can leave. Get out of here. What's wrong? I don't need you. I don't need you. I'm thinking, Wyatt, your drug dealer friend just told you that you have a problem, and yet you decide for yourself, oh, oh, he's the one. He's the one. He's a drug dealer. He's supposed to give me the drugs. He saw you overdose, and even though he left you, the fact that you're still alive, it was even a reality check for him. Like, yo, I got to chill on this one. I have to chill on this one. I have to let this one go. All money isn't good money. You know it's bad when someone who does that, it's like, mm, all money isn't good money. When you're paying him for his service. Dang. 
Wyatt is a true addict. And we knew it. <sighs> but Benny is doing the whole... He's irritated and he's heard that Candace hasn't um, reached out. He won't eat. I'm thinking, Benny, you, if anyone needs to eat, that's like saying, I won't eat. Like, I already look like if I miss maybe three meals, I'm going to fall apart. So you, who stays in the gym or stays working out, you miss like two meals and you're going <laughs> to shrivel up. So I know you must be eating something. Yeah, that rage from your sister and all that, it can't be fueling you. Hannah's saying, you know, I'll get a job. I'm thinking, what? Um, she's like, you need to go and get a job too. He is over it. He's trying to act like, no, I can't. She's like, you can start over. You're working towards a dream. I understand. You can do it the same way that you did the first time to get your trucks. Like, oh, um, I want to start over. Benny, you're 20-something years old. If you think that you can't start over that at that age, then you've already defeated, then you are a loser. That is what's going through your mind right now. There's people who have to start over in their 60s, 70s. You need to get over yourself. You need to get over yourself. You need to understand, learn from your mistakes. Learn from your mistakes. Your mistake is you put too much of your business um, and intertwined it with your sister. You should have never done that. You should have been like, okay, but let me go and get this documentation right now. Oh, whatever you say. So this is partially your fault as well because being naive, being naive, that doesn't excuse for excuse you from all of this. Mitch goes and gives him a call, and Benny doesn't realize that it's Mitch yet because it's like he doesn't know the number. It's like, dang, and she didn't even call me, let me know. Of course, I'm speaking in code because Quincy Jr. is over there. Mitch lets it be known. You gotta get your sister. You gotta save your sister. Why do I have to do that? What are you talking about? He's out. He's he's out. He's coming after. He's coming after a war. It's like, yeah, I'm down here. It's like, wait, so when are your people getting you out? I don't know. They speak to them right now. They're gonna get me out soon. But I, you need to go and get your sister right now because he's out. No, with what you did, he's gonna be in there for a while. No, he's already been out. And so Benny's like, oh, oh my gosh, Candace in danger. No, even though she has on my nerves, that's my sister. Those go time again. Oh, okay. What happened? She's in trouble. War's out. War? Warlock? Wait a minute. He's... Wait, but he's been friends with the family. I basically raised that child. Yeah, Mom, I know. Because he's after candy. He said, well, what? What happened? Look. Some stuff happened. But he's after her. No, he's not going to hurt. He loves her. I'm telling you. He is part of the reason why we're in this mess. Him? Wait, where are the keys? Don't worry about it. Where are the keys? Why are you hiding from me, Mom? I'm not hiding from you. But you're not going anywhere. Yeah, I am going. I'm going to save my sister. She's in danger. If I don't save her, something's going to happen. Quincy Jr. is right there. Stop it. Where are the keys? Quincy Jr. was playing with them. So because of that, they were uh, like under some clothes or whatever. And so then it was like, where are the keys? I was like, excuse, excuse me. Who are you talking to like that? Excuse me? Who are you talking to? That's a child. And of course, Hannah's just like, here's the keys. It's like, Quincy Baby, the keys aren't a toy, so please leave them while I'm thinking. Maybe if you guys went and sold that car, he would have a nice toy or two to play with. You know, the books are cute and all, but with all the messes going on, he needs another type of distraction. Anywho, he's going to be enrolled in school, which is good. Uh, I didn't know that you could be enrolled into school, but she doesn't have money to take care of his health care because you need to have all of that up to date before they go into school. Maybe I'm thinking too much into this. Anyway, Benny gets the keys, he goes and leaves. Uh, Wyatt, another person who should not be driving. That car is nice, though. That car is nice. It looks like a BMW, if I'm not mistaken. That's like one of those expensive like sports uh, BMW cars. And he shows up to none other than Queenies, um, neck of the woods. And he's trying to, you know, he's like, yo, um... Do you guys know where I can get some blow? I'm thinking you strolled up to the hood because you figured someone would be know where the drugs are. Just because you're right in this case, that irked me a little bit because not all hoods are well. Hmm, not all people who are just outside the hood are like that. So that's why I was like, hmm, let me get this crowbar so I can hit him. But anyway, they realized, oh, this is a nice car. How much money you got? And he's like, here. It's like, oh, that's a lot of money. Yeah, I know. So what can I get for it? It's like, oh, well, we think we can help you out. And so then they go. 
<laughs> and one guy goes around to his side, so it's like, oh yeah, my man can help you. Distracts him, pulls the gun out on him, says, okay, get out the car, get out the car. It's like, no, don't worry about it. No, no, I have a bigger plan. Why don't we go to his place and see what, um, how much more money he has? Give me your wallet. So they give him the wallet and they realize that it's Judge, Judge Cryer's son. And you know, Queen knows all about them. So it's like, no, let me get in that car. We're going to drive because we're going to go to your place. No, give me the gun. We're going to go to your place. We're going to case it. And, um, uh, and then we're going to kill you because you and you killed that little girl. We know what you did. We know what you did. And I'm thinking, I'm not even upset. I'm kind of upset that it's Queenie, but I'm not upset in general because Wyatt, you definitely deserve anything that comes back your way. Now, David, he used uh, Rose, you know, Mama Rose, his services in order to clean it up. And Jim's just like, Lord Jesus, we owe her so much. Yeah, I know we owe her so much. But on to more important things, uh, Jim lets David know, for once, this wasn't your wife. This was not your wife. You know, I have cameras all around the house. I have cameras on the front of everything. So I would know that if it was your wife. It was Catherine. But are you sure? Yeah, it was Catherine. Yeah, Catherine did it. She um, told me the truth. I'm thinking, dang, is that house so big that they, David couldn't clearly hear what they were saying upstairs with Catherine screaming and all? But then again, it was the bathroom door and it might have been closed and all that. But whatever. Uh, David is just so overjoyed. It's like, wait a minute now, but let's not get too happy about it because your wife is so cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Oh, no, don't worry. I'm not going back to that. Great, David. I don't believe you. But then again, this is the woman who tried to kill you and set the house on fire with you in it. I was like, she is crazy. How do I know that she's not going to go and blow up our spot? Look, she's not going to do that. How do we know? She's not going to do that because she's the type of person where she set the house on fire, but she made sure to get out of it. I was like, oh, yeah, so I'll, I'll figure that part out. Yeah, we just made such a big mess. Yeah, yes, we did. Because remember, Jim was trying to let Catherine know, you idiot, you killed the DA. So now the feds are going to come down there and interrogate and investigate. And they're going to probe deeply. We need everyone on their side. Because also, Jim was irritated because it was like, Catherine, you try to create an alibi. And the only people who know that Jennifer was there was us. Really? Really? So the people who may not be on our side are the only people who know and can verify it. Oh, God, you idiot. You, you bumbling idiot. Anyway, and it hurt me that Jim was correct with everything that was It was killing me inside. Killing me. <sighs> Erica calls David to thank him for giving her the flowers. David lets me know, oh, that's, you know, it's nice to hear a nice voice. It's like, oh, thank you, and thank you for the flowers. I didn't give you the flowers. What do you mean? I did not give you the flowers. So then who did? Oh, oh, oh my gosh, Erica, Erica. Erica goes to the door, and it's Veronica. I said, you know what? That is a dangerous woman. And I can't believe I'm here for her right now. I can't. Oh, God. God. All right. Please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Come back.